So now let's get into part two. Here we're gonna be setting up for people or vehicle non-specific. So a quick recap, intrusion is anywhere. Most cases, you're not looking for anything specific. You're just saying, I want to look for if a person comes onto the property, if a person on a bicycle comes on the property, if a vehicle drives through, that's all I really need to know is, is it a person, is it a vehicle? I don't need to know which vehicle, what color make. I'm not trying to get a tag. I'm not trying to get a face or a uh, attributes off of a person from this distance. This is just a really big overview. I just need to know if somebody comes into the property. Almost all cases, I'm gonna do an intrusion zone because it's a very large area. I've got that time for at least that one second, if not two, to have that time threshold. And I'm gonna get really good input data and get really good output results. Now within this, you see there's, I have one area one and area two. And technically I could have four areas. Now that's getting a little busy and I'm not saying there's not an application for that. But in most cases, what I try to do is this. Look and see you've got your vehicle, your non-motor vehicle and your pedestrian. You'll notice that here in area one, and I know I'm area one because I can see the little white dots here and I can tell the tab that I'm on, that's area one. You'll notice I've got that for vehicle and non-motor vehicle, right? So again, if you're in a vehicle, you can't make it into the parking lot, you can't come from this direction, you can't come from that direction without entering into that zone. I guess unless you dukes a hazard up over the curb and the grass and the hill and through the bushes, you're not gonna make it into there. So that's gonna be my area for vehicles coming in and out. And you see, I've got that set to a time threshold of one. Right, just because if a vehicle came through quickly, maybe it could make it through in under two, so I left that at one. Before we get into the minimum max sizes, let's look at area two. Now area two is a much bigger zone. You'll notice that it's not vehicle and not non-motor vehicle, but it's only for pedestrian. So therefore, if anybody walks anywhere towards the building from any of these angles, then if they walk into this image towards the sidewalk from any direction, they're gonna walk within this and they're gonna be triggered as a person. And you'll notice the time threshold is two. That's because, like I said, unless they're really fast sprinters, they're not gonna make it through this entire image within two seconds, and I'm gonna get much more accurate data. Now let's talk about this minimum and maximum size. First, let's cover pedestrian. When it comes to a pedestrian and minimum and maximum size, most cases maximum size is not gonna matter, especially when you're doing an overview. Just leave it default, leave it the entire scene. What is gonna matter is the minimum size. And so when I click the edit pencil, by default, it's this very just teeny tiny little device down here. And again, that's gonna cause problems because it's saying just the tiniest thing could I classify that as a human if it had some of the same similar characteristics of a human being? So therefore, let's open that up a little bit. That may be a little too big there. Let's go down just a little bit. What you wanna think about is how far out do I wanna capture a person coming into this? And for me, I'm anywhere within, you see there's the size of that bush. I'm anywhere within this region right here. So if you make it all the way into here and you're a person, that's when I wanna start working on, on capturing you. Will I capture a human down there? No. But that's going to be so far away. I don't know that with this camera, this is the right setup. I'd probably want to zoom in further down there to have more accuracy. You could even see the bicycle and the lawnmower way over there. Again, way too small to be triggered. I'm looking at people that are much closer. That minimum size really helps you remove a lot of bad data going in that you want to make sure you're not getting. So almost always I will come in here and at least increase my minimum size um, you know, to a good bit. That's 10 times larger than what it was originally, and that's gonna remove a lot of false data. This is especially important if you're in a residential area and you have a lot of dogs. I happen to have four large you know, labs, golden retriever and a husky at my place, and if I don't go in and do this minimum size settings, every now and then I will get the dogs popping up, and so that removes that as well. Again, another, another, another place you can use the minimum size. So now let's look at vehicle. To do that, I'm gonna go back over to area one, again, where I had the vehicle. It's really easy sometimes to forget which one you're on. You're, you're in pedestrian, you don't think, and you go to maximum size and you change it, and then you go, oh no, that was supposed to be in vehicle. Just always make sure you say that first and click on the one you need. So again, vehicle, you'll see here a minimum size. All right, again, all I did was go in and increase it. All right, you'll, you'll notice that that's not even 
as big as the one for the human was. Again, I'm just making it something larger. I'm trying to help eliminate reflections, headlights, anything that could possibly put in false data. It just makes it better. Maximum size again, in this case, it's not going to matter. You're gonna leave it probably almost the maximum size. Beginning, we're not looking for a specific vehicle. We'll see that later when we get over into doing the LPR. Couple last things, don't forget if you've made any changes in here to go ahead and hit save changes, click on that to save your changes. And if you've done what I've done many times before and accidentally clicked on something over here and you put like a line way off to the side and messed up your entire zone or you actually hit the trash can and whatever reason hit OK and you got rid of all of your areas and you're like, oh, I've got to do it all over again. Stop. Do not save and simply go out of the settings. Come back into the settings. And there is your savior. It's back now. You didn't have to go back and kind of start over where you left off. Something that happens to me every now and then, especially when I get fast and going through it, just don't save them.